has a he's an interesting guy, man, and uh, you know he believes it. So, Kyrie, the Earth is flat, right? Yeah. 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 So whatever. That's news. That's news. Here we go. <laughs> You must unite what has been set aside. We are TFR. Truth Frequency Radio. Casting straight to you from large spaceship, currently anchored, yes, anchored until further notice, above Raleigh, North Carolina, eagerly awaiting the 2017 Flat Earth International Conference. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Strange World, where the truth is often stranger than fiction. I'm your host, Mark Sargent, the creator of Flat Earth Clues, which proposed that all of us are living inside a Truman Show enclosed structure thousands of miles wide. Check it out at enclosedworld.com or just Google Flat Earth Clues. If you can't find it, that's because the internet is clogged up with the secondary Flat Earth media explosion, which is partially what I'm going to title this show tonight. For those of you listening to this on YouTube and want to hear the show live as it happens, please go to Truth Frequency Radio for the latest schedule. Currently, the show is on Tuesday nights at 7 Pacific, 10 Eastern. If you are listening to this and it is not Tuesday night, then it is a rerun. And if you try to call into the show, you are going to get my voicemail, which is fine. I check all voicemails regardless if it's show night or not. But tonight I am not going to be giving out the show number, at least at the very least until segment four, because we've got a great guest for you tonight, which we'll get to in just a minute. Quote of the day from the peanut gallery is, you don't own science. Science is for anyone who is curious and who wants to invest there. Who said that? The infamous he who shall not be named, NDT. A couple announcements before we get to our guest. The Jeffrey Grupp challenge is still in effect, although I'm really close to doing something there. Jeffrey is really, really busy, and we did get an, was an anthropologist with a PhD out of the Netherlands, Maybe to talk about this. Uh, it's not going to be live, though. It's going to be pre-recorded if, if we do it at all. And I may, in fact, I may just post it on YouTube once I do it. At the very least, I'm going to talk to him. I got to remember to do that sometime tomorrow. I've got a, a thing I'm doing tomorrow as well. The Flat Earth Conference, even though we are way, way off, and we'll talk about that at length today. Anyone wants to check it out, and I know I'm being redundant because our guest is the one of the, the, the guys that's putting it on, is fe2017.com. Tom, uh, this weekend coming up, the, there's going to be a Flat Earth social event in Nanaimo. That's up on Vancouver Island in uh, near Victoria, Canada. That's going to be the 25th at the Rocking Horse Pub at 2 p.m. So I probably will mention it on Patricia's show tomorrow, but this is the last time I get a chance to mention it on this show before it actually happens. So the Rocking Horse Pub in Nanaimo, N-E-N. IMO, March 25th, 2 p.m. So with that, we're going to do something a little different because, hey, guess what, guys? We have a guest. It's not going to be a call-in show, and it's not going to be me reading emails, even though I do love both of those things. So you can't call the phone number, at very least until the fourth segment, and all the regulars out there go, oh, I want to call in. No, you can't call in because tonight we've got a special guest. His name is Robbie Davidson. He is from the YouTube channel Celebrate Celebrate Truth, 
And he happens to be the guy or one of the one of a very small group of guys that is putting on the Flat Earth International Conference in Raleigh, North Carolina, coming up in the fall. Robbie, are you there? I'm here, Mark. Thanks so much for having me on. It's a real, real honor. Oh, no, are you kidding, man? It's, <laughs> it's overdue. And chances are, because the, the conference is still uh, such a ways off that you and I are going to, you're going to be on this show a couple more times before then. In fact, we'll, we'll probably make it a, a, a requirement that sometime in October we book you and get you in so we can overhype this as much as possible. But uh, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be a great thing. So before I let you start rambling about the conference. What I'm going to do, we're, we're going to we're going to change things up a bit, guys. And what I'm going to do is the first segment, we're going to break things down uh, of, of, of items that happened over the weekend. And then the second segment, we'll talk about the conference because there's only 26 minutes in a segment. The third segment, we'll talk about the media, secondary media explosion, which happened just recently and still going on as we speak. It is in process. Right, you know, do not adjust your channel. And by the fourth segment, we'll just wing it. How's that sound? Sounds great. All right. So this first segment, and Robbie's not going to take the lead on this because he is a, a, a man of composure and dignity and integrity. But I tonight am not going. I'm doing this sober, mind you. I'm, I've, I didn't have like three or four glasses of wine. And I, I am going to dissect and break down the what will go down as the in my mind the infamous Eddie Bravo Eric Dubay interview so let me let me frame this for you guys if if you, if you missed it if you haven't seen or if you've been hiding under a rock what happened was Eddie Bravo went down out to the Alex Jones show he was flown down to Austin Texas and he did three different podcasts down there so he went down and did a um, kind of an informal podcast at a restaurant with all the producers, his guys and those and, and uh, Alex's guys the night before. Then he does a two or three hour thing with Alex, just one on one. And then he follows it up with a, another one the next night, which was interesting because it looked like and you, you can chime in on this. It looked like. The the rumor was that that second one or the the one that was um, with the the guy and the girl was canceled. That's the rumor that I heard that that it canceled. And he flew home early, but it turns out it wasn't canceled. He uh, they didn't release it until ten days later, and then when they put it up on their channel, they pulled it down almost immediately. Which was the same with with two out of the three. You know, interesting here. Two out of the three podcasts. So the dinner one was put up by Alex's channel and then ripped down almost immediately. First of all, it was heavily edited. The stream was heavily edited. It was edited down to two, two plus hours, edited down to 38 minutes, which, which I grabbed and then other people streamed it. And that one was pulled down. The, rig, the, the formal one where he and Alex are talking, which didn't bring up Flat Earth at all, was left up there. And then the one with the guy and the girl was pulled down in under eight hours, which, of course, everybody grabbed. Nowadays, everyone knows full well. It's like, look, just if you have a chance, record it as fast as you can. Strip it, whatever whatever you use, whatever software, whatever web website you go to. Grab it as fast as you can because you just don't know anymore, especially with Flat Earth. So that happened. And then during – in fact, during that last interview with he, – he was with the guy. And I – forgive me. I don't know their – I don't know their names. And even if I said him, no one would uh, probably know him anyway. But uh, Eddie mentions Eric, I think, what, five times during that interview? And, mm -hmm. and, and, and then follows that up with, you know what, I'm going to do a podcast with him. So he invited Eric to do a thing, and it was Eddie's. Eddie hasn't done a, hadn't done a podcast in a while, and he must have had like 10 different guys in that room. I, I, had, I was having a hard time keeping track of who was in that room. There's a lot of guys in Eddie's room. And Eric was – it was a video podcast – and an audio podcast simultaneously, and it was being streamed to YouTube. They had massive audio difficulties on on their side, and it was a bandwidth issue. You know, no question. When you do sometimes, when you do Skype, if your video and your audio, the video takes up so much bandwidth that the audio suffers. But the solution is to just turn off the video, and then your audio should, should work fine as a as a last ditch effort, right? So. And I and I made a prediction before this thing happened. I stayed up for it because it didn't even start. It wasn't it wasn't scheduled to start until 10 p.m. Uh, Pacific, which is uh, 1 p.m. Eastern, 
And of course, they were an hour late because of technical difficulties. And so it didn't start until 11 and it ran a long time. But beforehand, I was talking to, to some people in a, in a chat room. and I said, look, because uh, they were asking me to make predictions on what was going to go down. I said, well, if it's 90 minutes or less, it'll be fine because there's only so much flat earth information you could pack in in 90 minutes. You're, you're going to have to stick to topic and, and there's no way you can deviate and go off into the weeds, drive off off road. But if it goes longer than that, there's he, he's not going to be able to keep it together. He's going to he's going to start taking off and, and taking shots at people. Boy, did that that the timing was almost perfect because, yeah, the first 90 minutes were great. In fact, I was, you know, sitting there on the couch going, OK, OK, yeah, yeah, flat earth, blah, blah, blah. And then he goes in and starts up on Alex Jones. And and I immediately I mean, I was I was a little bit drowsy, but that drowsiness was gone. Almost <laughs> I sat up. I was going, whoa, 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 whoa. What are you doing? And people are saying, you know, there, now there's two sides of this. Some people say, well, no, he should, you should attack Alex Jones. He's compromised. You know, he's, he's, he's a shill. You want to use whatever, whatever words you want. I'm going, it doesn't matter. It's Eddie Bravo's show. Eddie is friends with Alex Jones, right? And on top of that, Eddie was doing, and so you could see Eddie was backpedaling almost immediately because he's on video. It's a live stream. And, and he knows Alex is watching this, or at least his producers are watching this thing happen live. And all, he was doing everything he could to keep Eric from continuing down that road it, to, the, to the point where, you know, he was he would say, you know, saying, oh, Alex isn't bad. He was downplaying it. And then at one point he was saying, you know, enough of the Alex Jones thing. He, he just came out and said it. And he was doing it. And, and here's the, the missed cue that, that Eric just didn't get. And that was it. it, it Eddie was the road to Alex's show. And, and I know people are probably gasping right now going, well, why would Eric ever be on Alex's show? It's because, because Flat Earth is bigger than Alex Jones. And it's bigger than your bias against Alex Jones. If Flat Earth is mentioned to Alex Jones, it is a whole new wave of, uh, of, of um, exposure that we didn't have before. And Eric decided to take it upon himself to just go on the offensive and fine, you got your small victory attacking Alex Jones on the, on the Eddie Bravo show. That was the, one of the biggest mistakes I've ever seen. It was an opportunity blown. Eddie was almost telling you, giving you the roadmap. It's like, look, I can get you on the Alex Jones show. Did he say that? No, but it was implied. Like he, he was his way in. If he did well on this show, he would have gone on the, on the Alex Jones show and, and did flyer exposure. But he decided to attack. And the, he's finally, Eddie, uh, you know, as soon as the, the, the audio got crackly enough, they cut him off. They even said on air, it's like, we're going to let him cool down for a while. He come, and I'm going, I'm just begging. I'm, I'm, I'm at my house going, please, please don't, please don't come back and start going out after Alex again. And he did. So eventually, you know, they had to, you know, they passed it around the table. There was enough people in the room. It's like, okay, let's just, let's just diffuse this thing and start talking about other crap. And eventually we, we got to it. Yeah, there's a time and a place. I mean, that's the way I looked at it. I mean, sure, were some of the things you were saying were true, but again, there's a time and a place. And to have the opportunity, like you were saying, to go on to Alex Jones, if that avenue was going to be there, you know, he totally botched that, in my opinion. So to me, I'm, yeah. I'm alongside with you that really this is a lot bigger than shills or Alex Jones or gatekeepers or whatever. When you have a platform and you're able to get this truth out to people where they can go and do their own search. Like sometimes we get so scared, like, oh, but what if they go to this person's channel and they get bad information? And it's like, I say to people all the time, you know, what person stays on one channel their entire in their life? I mean, they don't. They move around and they develop, you know, someone they feel comfortable with, the information. And again, this is not a leader movement. This isn't a cult. This isn't where we have one person and this person tells us what to do. And it was right. ironic, I felt, when he was actually saying this, the importance of this. And yet when they said, hey, can you recommend any other good people that we can check out? Uh, go to my website, you know, come to me. And I was like, wow, like it was really incredible. And I think it was very telling uh, on the show. I think even Eddie was surprised that he couldn't even mention someone other than him to look at, you know, and yeah. I'm not saying that Eric has, you know, all this bad information. I'm sure he's got lots of different things that are going on, but overall he's done a good job at articulating and doing things. But when it comes to certain things like this, when he's just going to completely snub everyone else, 
yeah. anyone that's not approved by him. I just think it's a danger because, again, like it, it, again, he does bring good things to the table. So I'm not going to sit there and, and defend Eric. I mean, I'm sure Eric's even listening right now. But my big thing was at some point you go, OK, well, wait a minute. Why don't we work together so that we can all, you know, bring this knowledge out and that people can kind of see that? Because I've said this from day one, that if there's going to be any attack, it's not going to come from without. We're used to the name calling, the stupid, you're an idiot, you're a moron, you know, Neil deGrasse drop, dropping mics on the stage. We're used to this. But the attacks from outside is not what we need to be worried about. What we need to be worried about are what's going to happen from within. And it's not yes. going to be this subtle PSYOP, you know, uh, COINTEL type thing. All it's going to be is division to keep us fighting and, and calling each other names. And But when we kind of band together, and I think that's one of the big, big reasons um, that, you know, Brian and I, when we were first talking about the Flat Earth International Conference, we yeah. thought was so important to bring diverse people together. And we know that there's differences and we all have our different personalities and different takes. Um, um, so for me, I was just like, wow, like, it's just incredible to oh, me that I, uh, this is not going to, you know, it won't happen. I mean, there's been all the branches, you know, reached out. We've said nothing. I mean, there's so many people that I know uh, personally that have been attacked, called all sorts of names, just horrible things. Their names have been just drugged right through the mud. And oh, yet yeah. I'll listen to them and they still will be, you know, nice. They, they still will talk very, you know, politely and positively about Eric, despite everything. And I'm just like, wow, you know what? Over time, I think... People that are really kind of down to earth, that kind of evaluate things, can see a true character of someone long term. It's easy to fake, you know, short term, but long term. And I just think that, hey, if we just focus on what we're doing, let people kind of think what they're going to do. But I think it, it's time, you know, to really start oh, yeah. looking at that way, because, again, it's everyone can't be shills. Exactly. An exactly. And let me reiterate one of your points there, which is if you guys, if you guys missed the interview where he, he did two things, of course, he was going to go into it's like, oh, there's so many shills out there. And but but what was interesting was Eddie Bravo went the other direction. And I thought that was very curious. He goes, well, can you tell me, you know, I can't remember the exact wording was people you support, you know, people, you know, channels that you would actually endorse. And Eric just sat there silent. And I, I'm going, OK, is he just the deer in the headlights because of the previous question or is does he actually not support anyone? And that's that's what it was. He literally could not that there's and again, I don't want to I don't want to turn this to a, a bashing thing, but that's what it was. It was it was all ego. It's like, no, I am the only one that that you can go to. Ifers is the only safe place. Everything else is a den of snakes. I was like, what? And then and, and I, I I know we got nine minutes until the till the break, but I got to bring this up, which is I got one going to bring two things up. First thing was the the Facebook post because he he mentions he calls he calls the the conference he literally called it what 2017 shill fest, mm -hmm. so into that effect. And and I remember full well that you know because the conference has only been announced what six weeks ago seven weeks ago. Mm -hmm. yep, and I right. remember you, you were saying, I was like, no, Eric supported this thing when we when we first started. And I'm looking at the Facebook post. And if you don't mind me, I'd like to read it real fast. Sure. Yeah. Where Eric says, thanks, guys. When when Robbie invited him to be a speaker at the, you know, why wouldn't he be a, a speaker at the conference? I, I want to preface this first, though, because I think it's important for people to know the whole story. When I first was reaching out to people, I'd say, hey, I've got some exciting news, you know. Can you contact me? What's the best way so that we can get in contact? I want to see where you're at. So what happened was he had seen the message, but I didn't really tell him, give him all the details, right? right. So he had missed that message. Now, when all of a sudden it came up and I said, oh, I'm really sorry, contact me. You know, I was still saying, hey, you know, if you want to come, I mean, we'll, we'll make it we'll make it possible because you were definitely, you know, planning to, uh, you know, be uh, to be asked to uh, to come to the conference. And I just said, you know, contact me. And this is actually on Rob Skiba's page. He had posted something. Oh, OK. The conference. okay. So, so what you're reading is actually live. You know, it's there on Rob Skiba's page. But go ahead. sir. I just want to preface it, it at and, first. And he, he was a little it. annoyed. He was a little annoyed that I didn't go into all the details. Maybe if he knew all the details, he would come. I mean, I, I personally don't think that would have happened anyways. But yeah. once we did get in contact, I said, I'm really sorry. I should have given you all the details. But hey, would love for you to come. Can you make it? And then go ahead and I'll, you can explain. Oh, yeah. Well, it's the, short, it's the short one where he responds and says, thanks, guys. I appreciate the invitation and I'm glad you created such an event. I've got a full plate as it is. However... As, how, as it is, however, so I won't be able to attend, but give my support to everyone helping spread the good word, peace. That's Eric's words six weeks ago. 
Yeah, I mean, maybe he was in a really good mood that day. I mean, that's the thing. And I, I'm saying maybe, Eric, at one point he was there. But I think that there's enough people now that have built up this kind of mentality and maybe they could have poisoned him. Oh, what are you talking about? Don't even think about it. These guys are evil. Remember what you put on the show, oh, yeah. people on your website. So what I'm saying is maybe he did have good intentions. I really doubt that Eric would actually post something publicly if he didn't mean it. So maybe oh, no, he no. was actually I, I thought about, he meant yeah. it. I thought he meant it too. Yeah. But I mean, what, a, yeah. what a difference six weeks yeah. makes. Because Correct. then he, turned, yeah. he turns around on a live feed, and it was the closest thing to a mainstream feed we've had to date. And he says, "Oh yeah, it's you know, don't trust anybody at the conference." He literally named it the 2017 Shill Fest, which meant he thought about that one in advance, and and dismissed everybody. And 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 on top, and, and it was such a short span. I'm listening. I'm just staring the staring at the screen, going, "You've got to be kidding me! You're really going to take that sort of shot." Anyway. Yeah, you say we're charging absorbent prices. Oh, I mean, God. Like, if you look around at a conference for a two-day conference, they're like 300 400 for tickets. I mean, at $109, he's just saying, oh, they're outrageous prices. But again, these are the type of things. Now, I can maybe understand it if he thought that everything should be free, but he sells books himself. I mean, I he know. has, you know, these type of things. But really, when it comes down to it, the stuff that he was saying that we're in it for the money and all these sort of things, he hasn't even reached out to me or Brian, for that matter, and right. asked, hey, where, what, do you, what are your intentions? What, what's your plans? What do you want to do with this? And I mean, if he did, I'd least respect him for basically disagreeing with our intention and thinking it's whacked or, you know, it's chill or whatever. But he hasn't even, you know, taken the time to actually even ask. I mean, he yes. could say, hey, why are you inviting this person or that person? And we could easily say, listen, this is beyond people. This is about getting different information because the world is watching. And as, you know, a podcast like happened last night, um, even if it was mentioned, I think people would be curious, like, oh, I'm curious to see who the show fest is going to be. And maybe they'll right. type it in. It's just more publicity. So in, at the end of the day, I think that really, you know, Eddie, if he's listening or, you know, Kyrie or even Shaq are listening to this episode, really, when it comes down to it, investigate it for yourself. You know, look into these things. And really, after the conference is done, you know, people will really be able to really be able to talk for it at that point. You know, oh, so yeah, it's one thing, yeah, absolutely. you know, months ahead saying, oh, it's going to be crap or it's going to be this or that. But really, in actuality, you know, the event's going to be absolutely incredible. Uh, it's too bad that, you know, people want to point fingers and say it's evil or it's a show fest, when in reality, they're going to see that it's something that needed to happen. And really, it's beyond people. It's not about right. any one person. It is about bringing different things, different backgrounds, different beliefs, and really coming together and saying, look, we're all in this about exposing the lies that we have been taught. Now, the one thing that Eric did say that we would all be in agreement with is we're all against the lies of evolution, Big Bang, right. heliocentrism, right, right. right, the globe. So if we could just stick to that, but no, then you get into all these other things. So really, when it comes down to it, what makes someone a shill? If all of a sudden, you know, he comes to my channel and I'm exposing Big Bang, evolution, you know, all of the heliocentrism, but I'm a shill. Well, how come I'm a shill, right? These are right, the same right. things that you're exposing, but maybe I'm not going to the fullest yep. end of the truth. Like he says, you know, uh, they're giving you 80% truth, like Alex Jones, you know, that right. type of thing. So, it, but again, the question is, is Eric 100%? Could any one man be 100%? No, we're all fallible, right? We right. all have error. We all have biases. So the reality is that not one person could give 100% full truth. It's an impossibility. And he needs to know that. And anyone listening to this broadcast needs to understand that any one person to follow is dangerous. Do not do it. Yep, yep. And let me let me make these two points before we go to break, and then we will dismiss and not not talk about this for the, for the rest of the thing. Uh, first first point is is that in the end it came for for me anyway it came down to ego because he was saying stuff that I've heard before, which was it's a if you've heard this before, look it's a leaders it's a leaderless movement, but I want to be the leader. You know, it's a grassroots movement. But you should come to me for everything. I've heard this before, and it came from a guy named Matt. All right, I've 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 heard I've watched him on video do this very thing, and I've you know it, I'm 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 done with the olive branches. But the second thing I want to mention, and I don't want to diminish this in any way, I'm going. It, I will say this flat out right now. I, I have not said this to date, which is look, Eric Dubé has a shelf life, and anyone that's an Ifers, if you don't see this by now, it, you, you really should take a hard look at this. And that was because of the video that he made, and it's still up on his site, and it's been there for the better part of two years. It's called Adolf Hitler versus the Jew World Order. All right. And I want to mention two, two instances here, both of which you guys probably not, have not heard of. One was a production company at the end of 2015 when we were doing screen tests with other flat earthers, not Eric. And I asked, I, I said, is there a reason why you're not bringing Eric into this? 
And they go, yeah, because of the video that's that's on his website. They said, look, there, nobody's going to be able to touch him. He's he's toxic in that regards. There no mainstream production company is ever going to be able to touch him because of that video that's up there. And the second time was was just last year when there was another production company out of Los Angeles, and they d went into a Netflix meeting, and gave me the details, and they said, "All right, let's let's pitch the idea, Flat Earth." Da, 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 da. And they punched they punched up Eric in two seconds, and that meeting was over. I think they said in under three minutes, where they said, "Look, uh, one of the lead guys in Flat Earth is anti-Semitic. We don't want to have it. We don't have anything to do with it." And that was the end of it. That meeting blew up and it was and it was over. And I had nothing, you know, nobody else. There was only one guy that was to blame for that. And some people said, well, you know, look, the, no personal bias is bigger than this topic. I, I cannot stress this enough. Uh, and and I, I will say this as the years go, you know, as the months go by. But that's it's it's going to haunt him in the end. And this, look, as a personal plea to you, Eric, your personal biases, you got to bury him. Because if you think you're going to go forward with the community, or even even by yourself, you are only going to be able to go so far. Uh, and even Eddie Bravo is not going to be able to help you. So, uh, any any last thoughts on this before we go to break in about sixty seconds? For, for no, I Bravo. think I mean, no, I think I think you summed it up very well. And I mean, hopefully he'll really you know take these things and and think about these things because really at the end of the day, even from day one. We were like, you know, Eric brings a lot of great stuff to the table. And like the basic rules of the conference are, hey, the, the, the conference is called Flat Earth International Conference. So you don't go off on tangents and talk about, you know, nuclear missiles and different things like this. So really, if Eric came and he gave us a stellar, you know, uh, teaching on, you know, breaking down the lies, you know, awesome. Just like everyone else that's there that's going to be bringing different things to the table and the panels. That's wonderful. But again, it comes down to if you want to go on a tangent and all sorts of different things, you got to, you got to, it's like you got to pick your battles. And me, I'm right. not saying that everything he says is not true, but pick your battles and know yeah. the time and place. So for me, there's certain people that are going to look at this as opportunities. And some people will say, well, you shouldn't do that and you shouldn't sell out. But it's not selling out when it's people, not selling out. yeah, because you're basically saying, look, look into this. And you know, every person, it's one person at a time, they start doing the research and they go on their own journey. And that's the point I want to make is go on your own journey. Don't listen to me or Mark or Eric or anyone. Go oh, on yeah. that journey for We're, your own. You, you, excellent points. We're queuing up music and we'll be back in three minutes. So stay there. Real people, real radio. Wherever you are, make it TFR. Truth Frequency Radio. back to strange world i'm your host mark Sargent, and we are here tonight with robbie davidson also known as celebrate truth on youtube and he is the man most responsible right now unless i'm wrong for putting on the flat earth international conference coming up in 2017 in raleigh north carolina this fall so robbie what um what inspired you to do this? Well, it started off actually, uh, actually in November, I, I came out with my first uh, major documentary film, Scientism Exposed, that I released on DVD. Um, and I worked with Brian on that project. He came and was involved and we got to know each other really well, him and his wife and me and my wife. And we, we got talking for, you know, all the success and everything that had happened. And the plan was to do two and three. Um, and it was Nicole that actually started thinking and saying, hey, you know what, we should do a really big event for next November um, around the release of Scientism Exposed 2. So she actually was the one that just started, uh, you know, thinking about these things. Well, anything, one thing led to an X and we were just like, you know what, let's do this bigger, you know, let's add this, let's add that. And all of a sudden I was just like, you know what, 
the community really, really needs this. Why don't we look and see what it would take to pull off, you know, like an international conference? Let's look into re like uh, venues. Let's look into the cost and see, you know, are we willing to, to go about it? So it was me and my wife, him and his wife coming together, looking at the contracts and everything and saying, are we willing to go with this? Because, again, at the end of the day, there was a big financial risk because, again, if all of a sudden, we basically put our name on the line. And let's just say that nothing happened. I mean, a lot of people were worried at the beginning because we said the tickets were non-refundable. The reality is that you could transfer them, you could sell them, you could do whatever you want. But again, people were saying, well, what if the event is canceled? Well, the reality is we already had the event. I mean, we would have had to pay for it regardless, even if one ticket had sold. So again, we would have done something, a movie premiere or Brian up there with his whiteboard the whole time and me speaking. But either way, it was going to happen. So these fears at the very beginning were like, well, if this conference doesn't happen because everyone starts fighting and we never get our money back, I mean, it's a big scam. And I mean, people really didn't understand the facts. It was unfortunate. But really, we got together and said, look, this is really important. This would be so much it would mean so much for the community, bring people together for the first time. All these people that have done these shows together, like Globebusters or you and Patricia and just different people to bring everyone together, not just the people that are going to be like featured at the conference, but everyone. And people have been so excited about just being in a room and saying, wow, you get me. Because, again, I'll tell you, this issue uh, among all issues, I mean, you could talk about Sandy Hook or chemtrails or you could get into even satanic ritual abuse and it's not as crazy as the uh, reactions you get from this. But people are literally getting booted out of their churches. People are, you know, getting severed relationships with their family. I mean, it's a very, very a trying time. So to have a community come together and just to be built up, to have that fellowship, to have that teaching, to just meet people. And we all become real at that point. And we felt, you know what, it's really missing right now. I had seen, I had been watching the community for a while. And one of the things I had seen, uh, because my background, I am in like advertising and marketing. And my company had done events. I, I ran a, a campaign where I did a North American tour where I did 50 cities in five months. You know, uh, it was a big awareness uh, tour marketing thing. So I, I had, you know, event experience. Um, Nicole and Brian, they had different things they were bringing to the table. Nicole had uh, press background and media and stuff. So when we got together, we said this is really important because the event itself is not even just for the people itself, because a lot of the stuff that we're going to be saying, I'm sure they've heard. But again, the people like the media, the press, the world that's watching, this is what's going to really show them something's going on. When all right. these people come together for the first time ever, they start looking like you've said this before. They look over like a, a circus, right? People wearing yep. costumes and it's just, you know, and they're like, wait a minute. You have an engineer over here. Hey, you got this guy wearing a suit. Hey, you got this guy wearing uh, you know, jeans. You've got, again, you see all this diversity. You see different people, and you can't even put them in one box. And that's the whole point. Flat Earth is bigger than one person or a box or a belief. It is so much bigger because really when it comes down to it, we have been lied to, and we're all waking up to the reality that, wow, you know what? Like It's like almost like the Matrix waking up in the sense going, unbelievable, from an early age, we were all lied to in this whole term of scientism when we, in reality, we believed it was science. And hey, science doesn't lie. Science is fact, right? Yeah. And that was the whole illusion is they basically started infiltrating science and really coming in there with scientism. And it was so brilliant in the sense of being able to say, you can't argue with that. You can't argue with science. And we're like, yeah, you're right. Science is science. But the reality is that the majority of stuff like evolution, Big Bang, heliocentrism, are theories. They're not proven scientific fact at all. It's nothing but scientism. And that's why I came out with Scientism Exposed is because I wanted to really highlight, wait a minute, are you believing what you believe to be true because it's science? What if you found out that it wasn't science after all and it was scientism? And most people are like, well, what's the difference? So I start off the film by explaining that. And really, that was basically what birthed the entire Flat Earth International Conference was starting off saying, let's let's run out a theater and let's do a movie premiere. Hey, let's think bigger and bigger. And then all of a sudden, I just said, hey, why don't we pull off a conference? I, I had web background, app development, you know, things like this. And I said, you know what? I'll make sure that, you know, what I bring to the table, obviously being more of the spokesperson dealing with the media, but also developing the website, making sure that we have a really good app. And by the way, the, the app for Android and Apple is just exploding. I mean, the community on there is just phenomenal. I mean, they're talking about so many different things. And again, it's so interactive. And people are saying, this is so nice to have something. So even people that can't attend the conference, we're going to have some amazing streaming opportunities um, to, be, to be part of it. So again, don't worry um, if you can't.
can't actually make it out, hopefully you can, but we're going to make it a really good experience for people that are watching online as well. Nice, nice. And, you know, it's funny that you mentioned that about science, because when I went down the, the flat earth rabbit hole, you know, started my journey down that thing, I really turned into a re-examination of science as we know it. You know, it started with me with a, with examining the earth's core and then I started looking at other things, you know, like what, what science would do to protect its own. And, you know, to the point where now I'm doing rants on comparing science to any other corporation or political body, because they're really, it's really no different than that. Uh, you know, of course, you know, science, there's, there's two sides of science. I don't want to go off on a rant here. You know, it's, uh, you're, you're the guest, but I want to, want to mention these two things, which is, Everyone knows it's like, well, you know, science is paid to do th some things they do for the money. You know, they'll make weapons for the military. They'll make nerve gas and napalm and atomic weapons. But they're paid to do that. They know full well what's going in. The other side of science, though, the rushing the products to market. That's the part that, that you know, there's this gray area there where, yeah, I think their, their intentions are good. But because of stockholders and shareholders and uh, people, you know, their jobs, they're, they're rushed to do things that, that and they cut corners, which science should never, ever do. And people just say, oh, what are you talking about? I'm going, you know, the little things like lead paint and lead gasoline and DDT and asbestos and, oh, I don't know, cigarettes that are good for you. Those type of things, and and one that I'm saving, I'm saving a very special one for if I ever get to meet NDT in person. But science does the the big question is, you know, would would science protect its own? They're an institution like anyone else. If the if something goes against the institution, if it has a chance to rock the foundations of that institution, they are going to bury it. Don't think for a second, and I'm uh, one of the things I like to do is put myself in other people's shoes, and that's that was one of the first things. It's like, yeah, I know full well why science. If science was the first people to discover this, they're going to make sure that discovery is kept under wraps for as long as possible. And uh, you know, and and yet they'll say, oh no, this is ridiculous. So it's ridiculous. Like deep in their heart, they know full well it's it's not ridiculous because we can find almost nobody to debate us. And, and, yeah, I run and that's into that. the reality. And I mean, it should have been it should have been completely slam dunk by now, you know, and that's oh, the thing. Yeah. You, sit, you sit back and you watch this and you're like, really, you're bringing up ships go over the horizon. I oh, mean, yeah. really, this is elementary stuff. And I mean, someone brought up a good point. It might have even been you saying, what, when was the actual scientific experiment ever done? Who was the actual scientist that did yeah. the original, you know, and it wasn't. It was more just like, yep, I can't see it anymore. We're on a ball, you know. And but, these type of things aren't science, unfortunately, you know. No, it's no, just, the yeah, the scientific test, you know, the ship, because lots of people will say, I mean, the, you, you've you heard the people, and in fact, I'm doing a radio show tomorrow morning in Boston where I, I listened to their preview today, and I can already tell. It's like, oh, you know, you know what about the edge? Wouldn't all the water fall out and, and ships go over the horizon? I'm going, dude. You you really don't know anything about anything if if that's if the, some those some of the arguments you're using, but yeah, the science really has a tough time dealing with this. And, and the analogy I've been coming up with recently is here's here's the problem. Even if you were confident, you were a good public speaker with with astrophysics skills and uh, um, astronomy skills. You can't really come to this because it has to be a knockout. If you, I'll use the boxer analogy. Science is the overwhelming favorite. Therefore, if it does not knock out Flat Earth in the first round, everyone's going to look at them and say, okay, why didn't you knock them out in the first round? And if it goes two rounds and three out, forget about, you know, forget about losing or a draw. If you don't knock Flat, out all, flat Earth out almost immediately, you're, you're, it's considered a loss. And, so, and every scientist, I can tell, I, I, can, I, can, I can almost hear the, the wheels spinning in their heads. They try to go down this road. It's like, okay, I can do this. And then they see some of our questions that are that are really out of their expertise. And they're going, yep, I'm not touching this. And they don't yeah. know what to do. And yeah, that's so another thing, too. I mean, and again, watching over and over and over Neil deGrasse Tyson and Bill Nye addressing everything that blows up in the media or whatever, that should tell people a lot. I mean, really? You're bringing these two actors, these two clowns? These yeah. are your main spokesperson for all things science? I mean, science is, you know, we're, we're, we're taught the, it's the empirical method, and these guys are real smart. And again, they just giggle and laugh and bring up the ships go over the horizon over and over and over. But again, eventually, and it already is breaking down, these yeah. things aren't going to fly anymore. And the question is, what are they going to bring up next? Because they don't have anything. So right. we're, getting, we're moving into a new phase where all of a sudden that's just not going to fly anymore because people are going to find a video and go, oh, uh, yeah, that's a good point. They just zoomed in on that ship. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I can't use that anymore. So one by one, all of their, you know, mockery and their things that they throw back, 
after that is done, people are going to realize, wait a minute, this isn't so scientific as I thought. It might be a theory, you know, but again, it's not science. And that's the unfortunate thing is we were just we we're preconditioned and everything that they told us in school was science. And the reality is it wasn't. It was theories. It was, you know, different ideas. But the whole under the scientific method, that is the biggest danger. And again, for me, I'm not even looking at these men. I don't believe men are even smart enough to devise a whole system like this. For me, on Celebrate Truth, I go into the spiritual truth of everything. So I go beyond it and say, listen, we're dealing with a spiritual entity that is so much smarter and so much craftier than just even mere men. Men themselves couldn't even think of something this complex, not to mention it's very very hard to debunk either way. Like we'll say, we can't come up with a conclusive model of the flat earth map, which is true, right? right We're still right. scrambling trying to figure it out. But that should also tell us something. It is so he heavily disguised that you can't just slam it down easily. So no. to me, yes, we know the lies of the world. We, we're seeing that over and over and over. But the question is, is it so grand that none of us will even get to the point to fully even see the earth? Can we even go high enough, you know, whether it's a dome or not or all these sort right. of things? The question is, will anyone with any type of technology be able to go up high enough to see the entire thing? I mean, the Bible explains that, no, that won't be possible. But again, right. from a spiritual standpoint, that's what I find fascinating is that, and I can, I can say this, regardless where you are in your belief system, what I find is funny about this whole flat earth community is I have not yet run into a flat earth atheist. You know, no. everyone has a believer of some creator, creators or whatever. So for me, I'm kind of like, well, you know what? You're getting closer to the true creator. But again, that is the key, though. You have to look at it because on all the media, they're going to say, yeah, but why would they lie? Why would they lie? Because vaccinations or other things, we can always follow the money trail. But with this, we can't just follow money. So the question is, why would they lie? Is it because financial gain only? I mean, maybe. But I think it's a lot bigger because if people realize that they are special, they are uniquely created, and there's a higher purpose, people can rush to say, but I want to find out what that purpose is. I want to find out the truth in all things, not just materialistic. Right. I right. want to look spiritually as well. And then when you connect all those together, I think that is the greatest thing about this is because people are going, wait a minute, I'm no longer an atheist. There, of course, is a creator, right? The question yeah. is, who is the creator? What's the creator's name? What does the creator want from us? What does, and again, these are the type of, you know, like you say in, in Flat Earth Clues, we come curious. We see a fence. We're curious. Who built the fence? Why is yeah. it there? You know, what's on the other side? All these sort of yeah. things. But that creates all these questions. What's brilliant about it is now people are asking all these questions. And that's what FEIC is all about. We're asking all these questions. No, we're not saying conclusively it's a dome or it's this or that. I personally believe more so that, yes, it is. Can I conclusively say this 100%? No, but I, I'm allowed to believe it, right? Just sure. like people can have their own beliefs. But at the end of the day, where we unite is that we all really highly suspect that what they're telling us being on a flying ball, a spinning ball flying through space, you know, is garbage, right? And that's right. the reality is we're coming together with that common purpose. And that's what's beautiful because when you break that down, you break down evolution, big bang, you're like, wait a minute, the entire thing has been constructed differently. And that means my whole purpose in life that means the meaning of life. What's going to happen when I die? All of these questions become completely, you pivot in one second. The minute you come to flat earth, boom, you instantly pivot to, wow, there is something beyond me. It's yeah. not just, you know, I'm a random, you know, materialistic accident. So to me, I, I'm really excited by all of this happening. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Out of the, in fact, in the clues, out of the three things, because people, yeah, I still get that question. It's like, well, why would you hide it? It's like, are you kidding me? If you're, well, you know, I don't want to insult them and say, look, you're really small minded if you can't understand the chaos this potentially could bring. But out of the three things that I mentioned, I said, look, there's the academic, uh, you know, changes, upheaval in academia. The financial sector, because, I mean, they'd have to shut down the stock market for weeks at a time just, just to make sure that everything didn't fall apart. But by far the biggest of the three is the spiritual side, which is it changes the way you look at the world, the way you look at other people, the way you look at yourself. And I wasn't exaggerating when I said, look, what people say, well, you're singing Kumbaya and, and you know, when you're saying there will be no more wars and no more hate crimes and, you know, no more malice. I'm going, no, I'm not saying it would be in a complete elimination of it, but people would be reconsidering them very, uh, you know, for a very long time, including you know, the, the, the statement that I've made to other people, which is, look, I can't even if I don't do it anyway, but. Even if I, I was really uh, had, a, had a motivation to do something malicious against somebody else, I can't at this point because now it's like it's look it's bigger than me 
But think about this. Think about this. I want to bring up one thing that, that for everyone listening, think about this though. If there was like a, you know, they were devising this conspiracy, men are self-centered in the sense that they would want the praise. They would want to become the gods or the creators or whatever. What I find peculiar about this is they came up with an idea. Why I do not believe it's just mere men bringing this up. That's why I believe it's spiritually motivated is yeah. because everything is to destroy anything to do with the value of our worth of who we are so what i'm saying is men if they were going to devise something they would point it back to them oh oh we'd be bowing to them we'd be worshiping them so what right. i'm saying is is beyond even men because what this entity you know and i'm going to go by satan or whatever the satanic you know force that's behind everything is saying i want all men to think they're nothing and they're just nothing you know and again yeah. this is the intent you read in the bible is God's trying to say, look, you were created with worth, you know, all of these things and purpose, where if an entity against that type of idea, it makes sense that he would devise an entire world system, not just to hide God or get rid of God, but also to destroy any self-worth, any dignity, any type of value that we would hold. And really evolution, Big Bang, this whole type of um, system that they put together, really, I mean, why are we surprised when people are acting like animals when we're taught that we came from monkeys? You know, the yeah. whole reality is our world is going crazy because from an early age, they're taught they're nothing. They're just going to die anyways. Go out and I mean, just live for yourself. The yeah. fact is that this is kind of the big deception. And again, hiding God, hiding the, cre the true creator and all of these things and everyone that's coming together. What doesn't matter what level you're at. And that's another thing, too. Maybe a person's at some level, someone's in another level intro level and that's the thing again i i came to eric dubay i watched uh, you know d murphy you uh mark you know you were like yeah. my, my first three but since then i did my own thing it's not like all of a sudden i was deceived because i came to eric dubay and i watched one bad video right his video yeah. was good but it led me on a journey so really for me i'm all about encouraging people to be like look this truth is important let's let's reveal the lies of the world and work together in celebrating the truth yeah, and that's that's an excellent point that you brought up, which is this is the only conspiracy I know, and I've said this on, on other things, which inspires people. I mean, really inspires. I mean, people can watch a whole bunch of 9-11 videos and then never do anything. They just sit in their bed and it's like, oh, this is horribly depressing. Flat, fl I, how many new brand new channels have been created because of Flat Earth? It's like, wow, I'm so excited. I'm going to get a Flat Earth. I'm going to, you know, and people have never made a video before in their life. And you can see them fumbling with their phones, you know, trying to make in their first video. And the editing's horrible. But the fact that they're getting it out there is is fantastic to where now, uh, two things. One, there's a massive, I mean, I so, I so envy the people that get into Flat Earth now because you type in Flat Earth in YouTube, there's just this wall of content that you're never, ever going to get through. There's just too much of it. And the second thing was, I don't know if you saw that, the, the video that I put out recently by a guy who made a video that was complaining that Flat Earth kept popping I up. And I did. It was great. It was great. It is it was autoplay. Great. I saw this, and, and he wasn't even a he, he wasn't even close to being a flat even a conspiracy guy. He just oh, he's made a mad. He's just like, can I turn this off? I keep getting recommended flat Earth videos. I'm not yeah. even a flat earther. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He made a video asking people how he can stop flat Earth from being recommended and showing up in autoplay. <laughs> and, like, and go and it's like that's it's got to be bad. It's got to be this, and we'll talk about the media explosion next segment. But it's got to be bad if there are people actually trying to figure out. And it was it was fat it was sad because I rubber stamped it with my you know my usual oh thank you for you know introducing your subscribers he had like twelve hundred subscribers, and he and other people were like recommending below and he hearted all of those he the only person he didn't heart was me it's like come on really man well it's interesting when you go look at your analytics in YouTube I actually was just looking at it uh, before the show and uh, the majority of people are coming through recommended videos. I mean, there is a yeah. huge amount of people that the, this this content is being recommended, which is interesting because you wonder, you know, what exactly is Google or, uh, you know, YouTube's algorithms in, in doing this? Is it just conspiracy? Is it people that are, you know, these type of yeah, things? Exactly. But of course, yeah, well, I, I came to it by a video. Right. I mean, it was oh, yeah. suggested to me. So, I mean, a lot of people, I'm sure, have the similar stories like they're just surfing around and saying, what's this kind of stupid thing coming up here? Oh, oh, what a bunch of I, morons. I, I, I couldn't I cannot literally count how many people have let me know that autoplay was the version, you know, they forget about recommended. It just showed up on their screen because then they were like, you know, cleaning the house and all of a sudden they're, they're listening. It's like, what's he talking about? Wait, what? And you know, the, and then they, and they start listening, but you wonder because is it part of me thinks it's meant to be, you know, this is part of the plot line. This is part of the grand plan, the, the grand design 
that it's going it's coming out. We all we all know this. It's happening in a way it's not being uh, repressed really that much. I mean, yeah, there's a few governors being put on things and some stats are being squashed here and there, but it's coming out. You know full well if you if you design stuff, you know, in, in web things, that that you could stop you could stop 90% of the recommendations in YouTube by just saying, okay, any video that, that has the words flat or earth in the title anywhere, don't ever recommend them to anybody. Don't let them show up on autoplay. You can do that with the search engines too. I mean, when you go into Google right now and you type in the earth is, what do you think it comes up? It comes up flat. We didn't even try to do that. That was just a side effect of the community. I mean, there, there are marketing companies out there that would spend millions of dollars to get that, you know, that line, you know, their company, like your best potato chip is this, you know, we didn't even have to try. The earth is flat. Bingo. We're at the top. Then you have to try. Oh, yeah. I remember even talking with Rick Delano from uh, The Principal, and he was just blown away. I mean, he obviously hated Flat Earth. Of but course. He was, so, he was so angry. But he's like, I got to give it to you. I can't understand how you guys are just blowing up. I mean, it's just like, I mean, a marketer's dream. So he was blown away even at the fact of uh, all of the stuff that he had put together and what was going on. And he believed that Flat Earth was trying to take down The Principal. And anyway, we had I our know, disagreements. I and he's, he's, he's a very He's a very angry dude. I mean, unfortunately, actually, but I got permission on The Global Lie, which was my first document. And then my second one was Scientism Exposed, where I got permission to use a clip from the principal. Because, I mean, regardless where you stand, I believe, for me, it has opened up so many doors. When someone doesn't want to talk about flat Earth, I've given them the principal just to get them around the geocentric, heliocentric idea, right? And it's yeah. open doors. So to me, I look at it as a great tool. I'm not saying it's full truth, and there's lies, of course, in there. But when you get someone to shift their whole way of thinking, wait a minute, maybe we are still. Even the fact that the earth doesn't move is huge for most people. And sometimes, you know, like I mention this all the time in conspiracy circles, sometimes we want to go from GFK right to flat earth. And sometimes you got to go slow, you know. And for yeah. me, you know, it's really important that you got to basically see where someone's at and address them that way. Because I'll tell you one thing, even for a hardcore truther like me, it was a shock to the system. I didn't sleep for four days when I came to this. I, oh, I was yeah. like, I was just, yeah, I couldn't even sleep. I was so blown away and I'm yeah, a hardcore yeah. truther. Nothing really rocks me like this, but this did. So the average person, what do you think that's going to do? I mean, they're going to, I mean, I did a video recently talking in the article and they said, you know, uh, calling people stupid or whatever is a way for them to comfort themselves, which I thought was interesting. So I pointed out in the article that most people are lashing out to us because it's a form. It's, it's basically a way that they can kind of deflect in order to protect themselves because in their mind, it, it would just rock their entire worldview. So therefore there's like, you're an idiot, you're stupid and they feel better and they can go on with their day. So when yeah. the next time you're called stupid or all you, all these names, like we all get called, the fact is it's psychology. It, it's actually programmed for people to do this. Don't take it personally. I try not to uh, because at the end of the day, they're just trying to comfort themselves. But when you have, and we'll talk more about this in the next segment, the media yeah. explosion that's going on, the beautiful thing, whether you know Shaq is a Mason or it doesn't matter, I don't care who you are, are. The minute you're on a platform and you mention it, people are going to start Googling. They're just going to start Googling and they're going to go on their own journey. And I'll tell you, one by one, more and more people are going to go, wait a minute, we've been lied to. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, and we got about a minute and a half, I think, until until the break. But yeah, it's 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 funny because I mentioned uh, well, you've heard this from different debunkers. The, the the what's interesting is the conspiracy debunkers, the ones that are actually into conspiracies, because they keep saying, well, it's distracting from real conspiracies, you know, like nine eleven, Sandy Hook, and Boston bombing, and the Illuminati, and, and all this other stuff. I'm going, yeah, it's distracting unless it's real. If it, because they they see they, they say, well, it's fake, therefore it's distracting from that. Because if it's real, if the flatter thing is a real thing, and it is then it is so far above any other conspiracy you can ever think of combined. It, it puts everything down on a second tier, which is why I just, you know, people, ask, it's like, well, don't you care about climate change or, or, or Sandy Hook or Boston bombing or, or, or any of the other stuff? I'm going, yeah, I care, but I'm never, I don't think I'm ever going to make a video on them ever again because this thing, you know, I'm going to see this, the, the flat earth thing to the end because this is the brass ring. This is the, this is the, the grand poobah, eight number one. It's, uh, can't, can't yeah, there's wait. nothing. There's nothing. There's nothing bigger than this. And again, no. I, I mean, going into climate change, I mean, that entire lie is enveloped in this lie because without the ball and without the ozone layer and all of their nonsense, there is no climate change, right? right? So again, all these things fall under the umbrella. So if you start looking at it that way and saying, well, wait a minute, all this stuff that's going on underneath this umbrella of the entire, you know, heliocentric globe lie, what else is going on? And I think that's exactly. the intriguing part about it all. Yep. All right, we're going to our second break. Back in three minutes, guys. Hang tough.
are now tuned into the truth frequency. Your protection from, 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 from deception. This is Truth Frequency Radio. Welcome back to Strange World, part three of four. I'm your host, Mark Sargent. And that music track was by Chip Baker. It included some sound bites from Dr. Strangelove by Stanley Kubrick, who is actually tied to Flat Earth in a remote way. Robbie Davidson, are you still there? Uh, I'm here. Cool. All right. What we're doing in segment three is we are going to talk about what I like to call the secondary media explosion that has happened in Flat Earth and all I'm doing. I'm just, I didn't have to look at other people. I'm just looking at my playlist from the, since uh, March 8th. <laughs> and it has been ridiculous. Uh, for any of those, any people that have been under a rock for the last, I don't know, couple of weeks, Kyrie Irving, of course, you know, the NBA's world champion point guard for the Cleveland Cavaliers, he came out as a Flat Earther on his podcast with Richard Jefferson uh, as, his, as his co-host or he was a co-host of Richard Jefferson and things that seemed to die down a little bit, you know, the media gave it its attention. All the, all the shows on ESPN covered it and all the, the major news feeds covered it and it faded for a little bit. And we, you know, we, we started to get, you know, some interesting stuff with, you know, the Howard Stern thing showed up and AMT, AMTV, did, I, you saw it probably just before the show, he released a brand new video where he did a solo thing on flat earth where he was talking about Shaq, but we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. And then all of a sudden, what was it, three days ago? Oh, I'm sorry. Before that, just before it happened, uh, uh, Ian from England, he dug up the best picture director, Barry Jenkins, you know, from the Academy Awards mentioning it. Tosh.0, he mentions it. Bill Burr mentions it. Uh, CNN does that little clever thing where they're trying to tie Flat Earth. Flat Earth is basically the new crazy, so they're, they're using that in their vernacular. And then, of course, Eddie Bravo goes on InfoWars, and then, out of nowhere, Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> Shaquille O'Neal during one of his podcasts uh, after a game, and, and it was weird because he, it wasn't even his idea, as far as what I can tell, it was the, the co-host. He just asked him, oh, you know, because that's the question now you ask athletes, because athletes, again, are notorious for giving bad interviews. They're boring. Look, I'm not picking on athletes in general. I'm just saying, look, you're trained to give really dry answers. You know, give it 110%, the offense played good, the defense played good, and our coach is great, and you know, all this stuff. So when somebody says something about flat earth like Kyrie did, it's a great leading question. They've been, they, you know, they throw this at anybody they can that's willing to answer this. So you throw it at Shaq, Shaquille O'Neal, you know, legend. You know, one of the, the best basketball players of all time. The Hall of Famer. Probably the considered debatable the biggest big man in in the NBA in NBA history, and he he wouldn't you know it wasn't like he was punking anybody he would not back down you know the, the, in fact the 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 co-host was really drilling it's like no it's not yeah it is no it's three times he did that and the media just it just went ballistic I, it happened on a, on an evening and by Saturday morning I could see the feeds. And even today, you know, it's only Tuesday and there's still new people who have not seen this yet. People are everybody is is talking about this. And so I've been just scrambling, of course, uh, Sports 120. I'll let you talk in one sec, Rob, because I, I want your take on this. Sports 120 covered it. ESPN jam went on it right away. And then all of a sudden YouTube channels, which didn't even cover the Kyrie thing, are now covering this thing because 
don't get me wrong, guys. Kyrie's a great player, but he's only been in the league six years. Shaq is a living legend that's known in just about every industrialized country. Shaq is like Cher or Madonna. You know, he's you don't even have to. Nobody goes by. He doesn't ever go by his real name anymore. Uh, let's see. Charles Barkley trolled him, and then ESPN the jump again, and then FoxNews.com. They they did a thing. So what I wanted to kind of ask you was. Because people, you know, some people say, well, you know, it's part of the it's part of the deception. It's part of the Illuminati, whatever. It's part of the man trying to orchestrate things. I'm going, you can't have it both ways. You can't have it small time grassroots and still get traction. The marketing uh, exposure for this thing, the the millions and millions, uh, you can't buy this uh, the type of marketing exposure that just happened in the last three days. Agree? Yeah, I, I would agree. I mean, I, I definitely don't uh, think at all that this is all part of a plan. I mean, if it was a plan, these guys would come out and they'd ask some questions, and say, "Oh yeah, flat Earth society, we're we're going up, you know, at eight miles, uh, you know, through space," and they would make it really ridiculous. Now, when they're approached, they're not sitting there and they maybe have all their facts because maybe they were sitting on a plane, they started watching some videos, doing some research, and maybe they're not at the point where they can articulate everything in an interview, kind of like when Bob was approached and he didn't do a very good job. I mean, he didn't backtrack and say, I don't believe in it, but yeah. he didn't really give concise, you know, articulate answers. So for me, I'm like, no. And, and the big thing here is they would obviously really make it ridiculous. They would link it to some really crazy theory. Um, but also at this point, they would want to contain it. If this was even on the radar like that, I think at this point, it's just so absurd. It's just like, are you kidding me? This is great. Let's run with this. He believes in a flat earth because I've been following the articles. I mean, one article went so far with Shaq is to say that the university should take back his doctorate. <laughs> you know, I thought that was telling that they were, I was going to do a video on it. I pulled it up yesterday. And at the end of the article it said, maybe we need to talk to the university to take back Shaq, Shaq's doctorate because he does have a doctorate. He's not some stupid, you know, athlete. Yeah. I mean, he is educated. And this is the point. People can't grasp this because this is the furthest end of the spectrum. I mean, even before Flat Earth kind of exploded, you know, 2015 or whatever, if you look back at old videos, the stupidest thing is like, oh, it's like believing the earth is flat. You, you can find these references all throughout time where it was the most ridiculous thing. It's like, oh, yeah, well, no, no, I'm not that dumb. You know, like you would backtrack the minute someone would say that. So this has been in place for a long time. So they're bringing oh, yeah. out the same things. But I, I I mean, yeah, Shaq's a Mason. So what? I mean, I don't even believe that he is that high of a level. When we're talking about who would really know the full truth, Neil deGrasse Tyson and Bill Nye are puppet actors. They don't even have a clue. They yeah. are just so indoctrinated into their system to basically go, oh, my goodness, these guys are idiots. Leave the science to the scientists, Right. Don't. Yeah. I mean, he said in his last interview, I think it was on um, when he was going off about it, saying that, look, it's fine if these sports stars, you don't want to believe this. They can keep playing their basketball, but they should never, ever be in charge of any science or even right. be involved with NASA. So what they're right. saying is they're segregating what they're doing. And if this was a big threat, they would contain it. The networks would say, don't run anything on it because people are going to be curious. So at this point, no, I don't believe it's part of the thing. I think that yeah. really it's a great news article. And really, when it comes to why are all these guys jumping out, it's because they're going, oh, my man, my man believes the earth is flat. Let me just look into this. And maybe they're sending articles to one another and they're like, hey, man, right. that's a good point. Because a lot and of them for, say, look, I don't have the answers. Go do your own. Remember Kyrie, what he said? And this was so telling. When someone says it, I can trust them. And they're like, look, man, don't listen to me. Go do your own research. That's giving a person freedom to go and search for the truth for themselves. And every time I hear someone say that, I can trust them even more because they're not containing the truth within themselves. Right, right, right. And again, the the Shaquille O'Neal, again, I'm going to, the only thing, way I could call it is like a secondary detonation is that the, the difference between him and, and everybody else to date is he has so much depth in the media, meaning he's been, he's been in the media eye for so many years now, decades. And, it, you know, he hasn't had too much controversy as far as I can tell, you know, he hasn't been nailed for anything weird. And he's he's considered a very nice guy, and everyone really likes him and very positive. And more importantly, there's a lot of younger players over the years that have looked up and still do look up to him. It's like, oh yeah, I want to be like Shaq when I grow up. I want to be that guy, you know, because his his tapes are are still being. I say tapes, boy, that dates me. I you know his his um the videos of him playing in the league, ripping down backboards. That's you know that's timeless. That's going to be around there forever. And to have him endorse it, I honestly, I wouldn't even care if he backpedaled at this point because backpedaling 
would generate just a whole new wave of stories. And it it uh, it would just be more exposure for for whatever. Even if he did try to backpedal, and somebody says, "Oh yeah, he's backpedaling," yeah, uh, you know, he's like, "Fine." First of all, let me see. You know, let me listen to something where he actually sits down in a quiet interview, because the media is coming after him. They just you know, they, I thought they were harsh with Kyrie. No, they're really harsh with with Shaq. They're the because the, you know again that that USA Today reporter when they ambushed Kyrie and said, "Oh, you know, you've got a responsibility." He basically was saying you you're not you're you're at a high enough level that you're only supposed to say mandated things. You should only, you know, you're not supposed to say anything fringe. Don't talk about conspiracies, don't talk about any fringe science. You only talk about what the state endorses. And uh, I love God bless Shaq. I yeah, I, I love I love I love Shaq too. The way that they're like, well, Shaq, you're wrong. And he's like, No, I'm not. Like yeah. it was so great. He was just so confident and so calm, and he's just like no, you're ridiculous. It, it's not flat. And he's like, yes. Now, now could he, did he answer the questions really well? No. no. And were some of no. his ideas, but you know, there was an interesting, if you listen to that, well, I know you did because re, you reproduced it. The, the Charles Barkley thing, I thought that was very interesting mm -hmm. because the, and people would say, people don't know, Charles Barkley tells a story about when Shaquille O'Neal and he met John Glenn and Shaquille, even then, I think he was a conspiracy guy. And he asked, What's further away? The because yeah, I think they were on the East Coast, the moon or California, and it sounds like a really dumb question, right? Unless you're in the flat Earth community, and then some people have been saying this in comments, which is, you know, that's a really good question because the United States, you know, is what three thousand miles long plus I can't remember exactly, but how far exactly is the moon? You know, and and his argument was I can see the moon, I can't see California. And I know, I know, you can't, couldn't see it because you're not going to be able to see through all that that atmosphere anyway, even if you if you if you had the the ability to. But I thought that was really interesting because I don't know if he was smart enough to actually ask that question, kind of like a trick question. But it, anyway, the point was he he asked uh, kind of like Bob when he was on that Hot 97 thing. He wasn't answering the questions very well. Kyrie did actually better than most. Richard Jefferson, I think, knows way more than he's leaning on. I, th I think he's the guy. I think he knows full well, but he can't say all his stuff on air because they're going to you know, slap a conspiracy label on him. But, for example, the, uh, the radio show that I'm doing tomorrow in, for a Boston sports station, actual you know, full-blown sports station, they're calling me because they want answers when it comes to Shaq. They're, they, they're no different than the 120 sports where the guy was going, what is going – that's what everyone – that's the new level now. This is the third person on the dance floor. This is the one that – because now the media has to say why. It, the, you know, beforehand, it's like, okay, okay, you're an eccentric weirdo. What, one, once he got to the – now we got to a, a certain group size to where they have to say, okay, why is this happening? Why are these guys talking about it? And they're, try, they're reaching. It's like, is it an NBA thing? Is it a black thing? Is it – you know, they, they have no idea where they're going. And so, yeah, these guys fished me out. And and I told they thought at one point that I was tied to the uh, the Flat Earth Society, and and in fact I heard on their broadcast today they actually mentioned it's like oh yeah we're gonna get somebody from the Flat Earth Society and I I wrote them immediately I was like dude I am in fact I don't know anybody in our community that's in you know the original Flat Earth Society the one they said that was based in Knoxville Texas uh, uh, Tennessee, and they you know they said we know we know but we we've got to tell people so all right all right just want to be transparent about it but yeah they're look people are looking for answers now and that's yeah, and i mean where if more people if, if people came out and they're like yeah man flat earth society all the way man they're 100 percent legit go check out their material that's when we should have red flags but at this yeah. point i mean the community and i understand the conspiratorial type you know audience and you're always going to be looking you know under a rock you're going to be looking everywhere and suspicious of everything unfortunately you can get to a point where you become too paranoid sometimes you got to sit back and just say hey let's just see where this goes because if it goes in a direction where they're leading people off a cliff in the sense to you know to actually falsehood that's one thing but when they're saying hey man you can laugh all you want and quite honestly i think they're getting kind of annoyed when they're on an interview and people are just laughing ridiculing them i mean Shaq has a doctorate the guy that was interviewing him doesn't have a doctorate right he's like how dare you sit and laugh at me right yeah i'm using my brain i'm using my brain i'm asking these questions and even though i forget what's his name you'll know his name um uh jeffrey or i forget what his name is that came on and he said look man can we just have this talk he goes i goes i don't believe there's this flat it was the guy that did the uh, podcast not the podcast oh the, richard uh, podcast. richard jefferson 
yeah, it was that latest one. And he just said, look, man, why can't we have this talk? And meanwhile, they're just laughing and giggling and saying, you know, there's some things to talk about. That's not one. So we're at that stage. Understand for most people, when you look at it, understand that we're at the point still where it's laughable. They can use our neighbors against us where we can bring up this topic and they'll just think we're morons. So yeah. it's not a threat to them. At this point, I believe, this is just my opinion, but we're not at a point where it's like, okay, major damage control. We're now getting into 10% of the population are starting to believe this. Now we got to move in and infiltrate you know everything at this point it's just like we can contain this we can run an article and everyone's just going to laugh but that one person is going to go wait a minute i don't know i'm oh, curious yeah. about that and they're <clears throat> going to do that search so every hundred person every hundred people one person and that's all it is so every time there's a platform for me i'm like this is great because again they're going to uncover the lies and so what what they say or if they're not a good representation or whatever i mean have you ever gone to a video where it was perfect i mean we've all run into videos that maybe weren't accurate or maybe they didn't have 100 percent the truth but you know what we got the free will to look anywhere we want and go deeper into a subject we could just stay on antarctica or we could be right. curious on the moon and we can pull up all all these videos on the moon and overall one by one people will start formulating going wait a minute i'm starting maybe i don't know a hundred percent what it is but i know what it's not yeah oh yeah yeah exactly that that's the big that's the big thing all the banners you know that are flying on the on the flat earth side they come in many shapes and sizes the only thing they can agree on that is on the other side of the battlefield there's only one flag and that's the globe and that's what everyone can agree on it's like well those guys are the enemy you know, they, they, every, fine, we're all flying our own flags, but we're all on the same side of the field. And that's why this thing keeps growing in leaps and bounds, and it, it won't stop. And I, I just, you know, I think it's way more than 1%. I, I think it's way more than 1 in 100 that, uh, that take on to this, because there's so many people that are in the closet about it. You know, for every, think about it, for every person that makes a YouTube video, how many people are out there physically cannot make YouTube videos because they and don't have the skills. And you watch what's going to happen after the conference. This is my prediction. You're going to yeah. see an explosion of people that are going to go, you know what? It's time. You know, I was sitting on the fence. I was kind of scared, but you know what? They're going to, they're strength in numbers. And that's what the conference is also going to do. There's yeah. so many people that are scared. They're coming out. They're going to meet people. They're going to be like, you know what? I'm going to do it, right? Because I feel community. I feel, you know, I've met people in person. So my prediction is even after the conference, no media, nothing, even if it didn't happen, I'm saying that you're going to see a major explosion, even more so when it comes to content, people doing artwork, doing any type of thing to get the message out. They're going to become bolder and they're going to get more, you know, uh, you know, extroverted in coming out more so, you know, with this knowledge and asking questions. And they don't have to have all these skills. A lot of people say, well, I can't articulate. You don't have to. Just sit there and say, doesn't it seem weird that uh, 43 years and we've never gone back to the moon? Maybe we can oh, yeah. go to the moon, you know, because the moon for me is really big. It's pivotal. Most people 100 percent believe we landed on the moon. Start there because you have to get them questioning the moon because they will never in a million years, for the most part, ever believe something so absurd as the Earth is flat until they start questioning NASA. That's one another thing yeah. that we can all agree. What flat earther do you know that believes 100 percent in NASA? It's an impossibility. So no. therefore, NASA and the moon is really pivotal in getting people to question, because once you start breaking that down, the question is, well, if they never went to the moon, where have they been? How far can they go? Can right. they go? You know, yeah. and again, these start questioning and you start looking into it and you're like, whoa, the reality is. I'm looking at all the data here, and you know, since the '60s, they've only gone 400 miles. That's weird. It's 240,000 yeah. miles to the moon. I mean, it's a fraction of a fraction of a percent. It's not even like they're going a little bit further than the moon. Hey, let's go halfway just for you know, just let, let's take a little trip and go halfway. You know, a weekend vacation. Nothing. I mean, they're not even remotely going anywhere close to the distance of 240,000 miles. So right. I start people a lot of the time just going, and a lot of people have gone, yeah, that is kind of weird. You know, maybe they're not ready to jump to the shape of the Earth. But one by one, you kind of you, you basically source someone out and see where they're at. And, and don't be afraid that to get someone, you know, that day that you're talking to them, it might be a month. It might be six months. It might be two yep. years. Take the yep. time with a person, because when it comes down to it, people will say, what does this matter? The truth matters. Yeah. Plan yeah. Planting the seed has always been you. You've heard me say it time and time again. It's like, look, you can't. And it's weird because it always happens the same way. And that is. Yeah, you, you know full well. I mean, you lose the sleep. You go in. It's this weird tunnel you go through, which is you, you get into flat earth. You lose a whole bunch of sleep, days, if not weeks. You come out the other side, and you're so excited about it, you want to convince people immediately. And something in your brain kicks in, and, and you think, okay, I should be able to convince somebody over dinner. 
and you sit down and you're frustrated because you, you're talking to these people and they're looking at you like you're insane because you've already gone through the insane part. You've already gone through the the detox or whatever you want to call it. And you, you everyone's got to – you got to remember, you don't have to convince them. All you have to do is put the idea in their head and just yeah. let them run with it because some people can absorb it very, very quickly. Other people like me, I, I was stubborn. Now, granted, I had less material to work with. But I was – I took me months months and of sleepless nights again woke up at three o'clock in the morning three thirty in the morning on a um uh on february 10th february 10th yeah february 10th 2015 woke up and, and sat up in my bed and i had the narrative I, that's when i said you know what i can do this i can and at that point i i basically resigned myself to not not trying to prove the globe but trying to get other people to prove the globe that's why well, nobody no and nobody mentions flat earth once in my documentary film scientism exposed and that was the idea i was like if i put something out there just to start really getting people just to think on a very very elementary level because right. we don't mention flat earth not once in scientism exposed nor probably will we in scientism exposed too but no. i mean we're taking people along that journey maybe by the third one we'll come out with it but that's the whole point it's a journey but you can actually put something together where you can start you know piecing things putting things in there and going wait a minute you can hint at stuff but when you start throwing stuff in where people start questioning it you know that's that and that's what we're to do we're not there to convince people you know we're there right. to just get them questioning because when right. people start questioning and, and doing the search for themselves you know that's the whole thing people that will search for the truth will find it and the truth will set you free you know the bible yeah. says that which is a, which is a great verse because again the truth will set you free and the truth does set us free it sets us free from the prison the lies that we've been taught and it's very liberating you know when you do come to the truth but again truth is resistant truth is not welcome truth especially when people are in their comfort zone you know hey yeah. man i'm in my bubble this is my world and when you're rocking someone's worldview it is the most frightening thing it's like it's like taking away a blanket from a child right yeah. it's their whole world you don't do this and and for us to lose an entire identity from childhood to adulthood no matter what age you're at it's a frightening thing if you start oh, yeah, there... it from a psychological level it is frightening to oh yeah, there was to the point going. I was lied to my whole life. I mean, you can watch The Matrix and go, "Oh, that's a, that's a movie," but it's a frightening thing when he wakes up and he sees all the people in pods. That's a scary scene if you think about it. How frightening would oh, that yeah, be? Oh yeah, yeah, If you yeah. woke up and all of a sudden you, you know, this was your reality. That's why it was so scared. So people can watch that. But again, like I said, Hollywood conveys truth in there. And really, in a, in reality, we are in a matrix, a matrix of what scientism and what the world has taught us have and put us in the system. And now, one by one, we're breaking free. And we're finding out the true reality of our world. And it's very liberating. And it's a wonderful thing. Like you said, I mean, this is, quote, unquote, the conspiracy that brings joy. It doesn't bring dread and gloom. Right. And it's like, it's joyous. It's like waking up and going, wow, this is amazing. Like, there's there's a purpose. I, 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 I was created. There must be a creator. It's like this beautiful thing. Like, children, we all wake up and we're like, this is a beautiful thing. But again, the spiritual force behind it all wanted to tell us that, hey, give us a narrative that says you're insignificant. You're nothing. You're you're just an accident. You're just a you know a, a oh, yeah. you know a slime. And again, that's what I think everyone should focus on because men themselves, if men were devising this entire plan themselves, they would zero in on themselves. They would get the praise or they would want the directional. And I'm saying if you look beyond men or like humans, there's something in there that wants to diminish all humans. I don't care if you're Illuminati or not. You might serve, and at the end of the day, you might serve that. But really, when you're basically structuring something where it's like you're nothing, you know, but again, there are certain people that know the truth, but it's a very few people that really do know the truth that are hiding it from this world. This whole idea that Neil deGrasse Tyson wakes up in the morning and goes, OK, I got to deceive the public. You know, I, I can't. Oh, tell yeah, yeah. No, you can't. That's crazy. That's crazy you, talk. It's crazy. You can't act naturally and know the secret at the same time. I think they knew they figured that out with the Apollo astronauts. They you know, you you don't know until you try. I think they, they hinted to those guys exactly what was was going on and they couldn't do both they couldn't be heroes pretend heroes and they couldn't know the, the the massive secret at the same time so everyone after that is like you know what you just don't have clearance and, and it might be another do... reason why they're not doing it because they know psychologically it was a test and it didn't work out well it really rocked them hard you see them in the press conference and they're just oh, yeah. a mess right so what i'm saying is do they want a chance doing this over and over and over when one person goes i just break down i gotta tell the truth like to me it's too risky yes you can have people but eventually someone's gonna talk someone's going to say something so the whole compartmentalization that's going on is very few people if any and oh, I, yeah, I think yeah. honestly and it, that's when they're not opening up for more and more people 
in my opinion, for trips to Mars and the moon and all that, because each time they do that, it is a deception. And one person's going to break or someone's going to be able to clearly see that, hey, wow, that's an amazing thing. You went and you walked on the on Mars and they come back to a press conference and they look like they just killed someone. I mean, right, that's not right. the reaction that a human has doing an accomplishment that is that massive. Yeah, and we'll and we'll talk about the uh, the Mars mission and SpaceX and the <laughs> Google X Prize. We'll talk about them at that sure. in the next segment. But I wanted to mention before we go to break here in, in just a bit, which is uh, it kills me every time because you see this in probably I don't know one in every twenty emails or phone calls that I get, which is do you know how many people it would take? This is the opposite side, the flip side to what you were just saying, which is that you know how many people it would take to 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 keep this thing a secret. I'm going and they're saying it'd take oh, so many scientists and pilots. All the pilots would be on it. And every space guy and everyone that ever worked at NASA. I'm going, no man, it's the exact opposite. It nobody knows. You, the only people that would even need to know at NASA would be the the handful of telemetry guys, and of course the the people at the at the at the highest levels. No scientist knows this stuff, you know. Maybe maybe some radio astronomers at one point, and uh, you know. But you know, I don't want to get into that much. But look how many radio astronomers have disappeared over the last ten years. Because sooner or later, if you're staring at the same part of the ceiling over and over, somebody's going to figure something out. And but, I mean, yeah. and I can say from a spiritual point of view, the Bible points to the fact that Satan, the god of this world, says has blinded the eyes of all the world. So the fact is, if we're dealing with a spiritual realm that's higher than us, it'd be very easy as to keep people in comas or keep people in a uh, you know a falsehood that they're not even aware of. They're just basically you know parroting what they were taught, right? So this whole idea that pilots would have to be on, they haven't been high enough. They don't even know themselves because at 30,000 feet, you, you don't see anything. You see basically flat, right? It's not like all of a sudden, you know, they've gone to a certain point where they've actually, you know, seen the edge or they went to Antarctica. So when it comes to these type of things, I mean, I'll go so far as to say being very, very few people, even the people in Antarctica probably haven't gone so far in. You know, my theory on it is that it gets so cold and so crazy. I mean, miles. I mean, I know Bird said that it was, you know, as big as America. But let's just say it was like 15,000 miles of oh. ice. Oh, right? crap. Hey, we got we to gotta go to the last break. Okay. <laughs> We'll talk to you guys in three minutes. You are now tuned into the truth frequency. Your protection from deception. TFR. Truth Frequency Radio. Welcome back to Strange World, part four of four. My name is Mark Sargent, and yes, that was Joe Jackson stepping out from his album, Night and Day. Okay, last section, we're just going to kind of freeform it with Robbie Davidson, otherwise known as Celebrate Truth, otherwise known as the man who's taking point on the Flat Earth International Conference 2017 in Raleigh, North Carolina, coming this fall. Rob, are you still there? I'm here, yeah, and it's uh, it's exciting. Every day that passes, like I said, we're we're so incredibly excited. We've got uh, media already reaching out to us. We've got some incredible um, surprises planned, and we're continuing to work hard to bring just the, like I said, history in the making as far as a, a conference that will be remembered for many, many years and something that will develop into years to come. So we're just looking and we're excited for everyone. Oh, yeah. Just the support and just, I mean, you've done... Some amazing like promos every week and i gotta say love the 80s love it uh, every time i'm just looking forward to the next 80s song because i'm an 80s guy like you and uh, it's awesome but yeah i mean if people aren't aware um at the flat earth international conference uh in raleigh north carolina we've got some amazing people we got you mark we got rob skiba we got odd tv patricia steer we got jaren Bob and John, the Morgal from Globebusters. We got Brian Mullen, myself. We got Emmanuel, which is the Controversy 7. We got Amy Denise, Carly Medrano, and Mr. Thrive and Survive, Richard Hopkins himself. So yeah. um, it's going to yeah. be it's going to be awesome. It's going to be a lot of fun. And like I said, we're um, 
so far the um, our expectations we had many type of expectations and we went kind of conservative and we went like great but we've been blown away at uh, just how well received it is there's been obviously some criticism and things written up here and there and that's that's natural and that's normal um you know some things were were addressed and some were just basic questions that people needed the answers to it seemed like again when i started up the show i mentioned that uh, the tickets being non-refundable that kind of you know <laughs> scared a few people thinking like well sure. if the conference doesn't happen will i get my money and that wasn't the point the point was that we didn't want someone buying a whole block of tickets, like 50 tickets. And then, you know, again, there's been certain conferences that have been tried to be sabotaged that way. So it was more of a way of just kind of protecting ourselves on that. But I can definitely assure everyone that the conference will happen regardless. And I mean, as the days continue, more and more people are getting excited, unfortunately, because we only have so much room, uh, not just for present, you know, for the featured people, as well as the people who are there. We're looking at growing this thing and making it bigger and better each year. So obviously reach out if you feel that you haven't, you know, been been asked or you have something to provide, you know, reach out to me, um, you know, through the website and we'll definitely try to accommodate it and as we continue to grow each year and make this something that uh, really is is special and something that really is uh, gives attention to what is going on. And I think a lot of people, I think there's going to be people that are there. I mean, it will be a family friendly event. There's people that are bringing their children for education. Um, so it's going to be a really fun time. And we're really, really excited, uh, like I said, about all the support and just how the community has received it overall. We're really happy about it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I cannot wait for it. I mean, yeah, I, well, I'm excited enough that I'm literally going to do a promo every Saturday using some sort of cheesy remixed 80, 80s track, probably. And But I have fun doing it. It's my excuse to do it. I love doing those things and, and just lining up the tracks and, and throwing the, the videos in there and seeing seeing what it looks like. And I and I spend a little bit of time doing it. But it's it's fun for me because I can't, I can't tell you how much of a positive thing this isn't like comic-con or a ufo conference or or i don't even know if, if there are conspiracy conferences because they'd be dark and broody and everybody wearing a lot of black but this thing it, everyone that's that's mentioned it they're just so excited to free uh, just anticipating being around being in a room that you cannot put a price tag on being in a room of people that share your view where everybody else in your in your other circles don't share in fact, not just no, don't share it, think of you as insane for even thinking that way. And, and it's good, too. And it's important as well that once you've met something, you, you, sorry, you've met someone face to face, they become real. And I'm not saying that it, we're not all real and there's all these people out there. But when when you come together as a community, when you come together going, you know, after the, the conference, it just changes things. You've met, you've hung out, you've spent some time with one another. You're just real people. Like we're just real people. I mean, all the stuff you hear rumors all the time. This person's a government agent or a CIA shill. And when the reality is that the people will see and say, these are just people. This is just a person like me i mean yeah we have your differences but you know what we're coming together with the common idea that we're helping to wake people up to the lies they've been taught and what a beautiful thing like this is just so amazing to be part of this and to be you know bringing this together and it's so exciting like i said i've you know i've been in it since uh well, it's been about a year and a half, but I remember at the very beginning, I remember Patricia Steer's first show. And I mean, just all the stuff that she's had to go through. And I mean, she's just someone with a background, you know, in radio, she like interviewing people and she's not even coming out at the beginning, you know, talking about all her theories. She's just interviewing a lot of different people. And that was the cool thing. But of course, you know, she gets dragged through the mud and stuff. And oh, I yeah. think that's going to happen when someone kind of gets the spotlight or, you know, does something. Oh, there has to be a suspicion there. But really, I mean, what motivation do you have by just interviewing a bunch of people? And really, she hasn't <laughs> had any biases she'll interview anyone doesn't matter what you come from you know let what me, kind of background l let me chime in there because i i've caught this since day one you know part of it was because of eric but but mo i did catch a whole bunch of crap and i still catch it from time to time people's oh no he's got to be a shill he's getting interviewed so much and he's doing all this stuff and and, you know, and it's like okay guys you gotta understand here i am doing just common sense things to to achieve these things one i actually put my real name on my youtube channel and my real phone number and my real email address you don't know how far that goes because people are lazy media is lazy you know they, they, they're we're talking about the same media that drags bill nye on for a, a, a quantum physics panel because they are talk to him about deflate gate or talk to him about anything that has anything to do with science because they're lazy 
media want to track people down. So if your channel is, I'm not picking on, you know, I'm not, I'm not picking on, on anyone in particular, but I'll, I'll just make one up. If your channel is called Dark, Dark Lord Master, and it's a picture of, you know, some evil guy playing a heavy metal guitar, and there's no contact info, they're skipping right over you. They, they get a hold of me because I was easy to find. As a matter of fact, you, you probably know the story. And that is the first five interviews that I did were interviews that Matt was supposed to do, Matt Boylan, because mm. he, he absolutely hid himself from the public. He had no contact information whatsoever. It was almost impossible to get a hold of this guy. And people were calling me. It was like junior high school and saying, hey, do you know how to way, have a way of getting a hold of Matt? And I was like, no, I don't. And I'd call up Matt. And I'd say, well, I actually did, but I couldn't, I wasn't allowed to give out his phone number. And so I call him up and I say, dude, what do you want me to tell these people? He goes, well, you know, I don't do interviews, blah, blah, blah. And then he'd ramble for, non, for another 45 minutes. I had no idea what he was saying. <laughs> and that's how it started. And then after a while, it was like, oh, he does the, you know, once I had a list of interviews, that's all it took. Once you have a, a few interviews in there, if you're easy to find, people will track you down. There's nothing sinister about it. I wasn't doing anything out of the way. I solicited, literally, I'm saying this as God is my witness. I solicited nobody when it comes to this. I, sol I never solicited my book publisher, which Rob Skiba was really surprised at. Uh, I didn't solicit any of the radio stations, any of the podcasts, any, which is why when Coast to Coast called me, I was just stunned. I'm go I actually asked him, why are you calling me? They go, oh, because we were you were recommended by such and such. I'm going, really? Because I they and and they asked me. They said, what's your um what's your book about? I go, I don't have a book. Not yet. I didn't. I hadn't even started it. Uh, what's your DVD about? I don't have a DVD. And they go, okay, what's your website? I go, do I I've been doing this two or three months. I don't even have a website. And there was this sigh in the other end of the phone. And I go, she goes, what? She goes, I need to point at something, you know. And I go, okay, point. <laughs> Because, you know, you've got – George has to bring up something on air. And I go, okay, bring up the YouTube channel. And at that point, I'm going, okay, I've got – I probably should get my ass in gear and, and start and start making more stuff. But it just snowballed after that. It was, Nothing was planned. Nothing – you know, the radio station tomorrow. They just called me. Hey, we need answers about Shaq. This guy was easy to find. Mm -hmm. So anyway. And, and yeah, anybody else that's out there. Uh, Patricia, of course, you know, they, they're going to come after her, but talk about your freaking dedication and I'm not kissing her ass or anything. You find, I have not done that many podcasts. I don't know how many people that have that sort of focus that could do as many podcasts as she had, you know, yeah, and, and I think that's and, the reality. I mean, it really comes down to, you can't please everyone. And especially with this no. type of community, and I'm not knocking the community. I'm just saying with a conspiratorial type, you know, community, there's going to be that group of people that are highly paranoid, highly suspect of everything. Yeah. Right? And they'll start, you know, telling everyone and then people are like, oh, my goodness, and rumors. And it's, it's like, like you said, high school gossip. And I mean, gossip does there's a lot of destroying of, of a lot of things. So yeah. at the end of the day, though, I think anyone that's really, you know, dedicated to this, they think it's important. They feel that they're called to it. Their heart is in it. You know, just press ahead. And that's kind of what I do. I mean, from day one, I mean, I've been called all sorts of names. And I'm just pressing ahead. I'm just like, you know what? It's so much bigger than that. It's so much bigger than a one person. I don't care what you have to say about anyone. I don't really care because at the end of the day, it's bringing different people of different personalities together. And not any, not every show is going to resonate with every person, right? So right. there's enough room. It's almost like this mentality, like there only can be one person or two. It's like, that is the thing that we don't need. We basically need multiple. We need thousands of people. We need lots of things. And again, it's yeah. having all these different shows and stuff. But I'll tell you this one thing, though, Mark. I'll tell you yeah. from the very beginning early on, I remember, you know, listening to Eric a lot and just hearing just how you would get trashed like crazy. And I'm like, yeah. okay, here, this is going to be a juicy show, Strange World. Let's check it out. And all of a sudden it was like, nope. No, over and over and over, you never went to that degree. And I'm just saying, over time, for the majority of people, that will speak to your character. I don't care if you can get called all sorts of names. Over time, you're kind of like, um, no, I think he's just some dude. You know, I think he's just yeah. genuine. He's just, I, he has his personality. He has his beliefs. He's open to anything. So what? You know, you'll get accused sometimes. They're like, well, he doesn't believe really anything 100%. He's just open to everything. Well, that's the reality. We don't know 100% any type of thing. I mean, even Eric Dubay said that last night on the a podcast a couple yeah. nights ago or whatever. So the reality is that we don't really know 100%. But what we do know is that we've been lied to. So now we're on this quest for truth outside of this paradigm, what we've been taught. And I'm just saying, over time, people will be able to look through the body of work, they'll see the character of a person, and in reality, the people that come out and meet face-to-face, -face, 
the people that hide away, that don't come out because they think the CIA is going to like, you know, pick them up or scoop them up, they can stay in their basements and that's fine. Or they can stay yeah. secluded. But the people that come together, we're all going to move in a direction that we're going to see. And we just have to push forward. Right. And there's going to be people coming against us. I mean, there'll be worse stuff than what we've experienced already coming our way. And if we're not ready for it, then, you know, it will kind of rock us. So we just need to say, hey, and that's what's important. This community coming together, having each other and saying, hey, yeah, we all have our differences. We're not all in this one common core where we all adore this one person at the top. We're not like that at all. So anyone can accuse us of anything because when they can't find a leader, when they can't find someone at the top or whatever, then that whole theory, you know, you could accuse someone of anything. But really, it comes down to this whole investigation. It comes down to facts. It comes down to real empirical science. So if you're going to accuse someone, you better come up with the evidence. You better conclusively do right. it before you right. start slandering someone. You know, again, in the real world, you start doing this to certain people i mean you would be sued for libel you know it's a serious thing there's certain things you cannot do but again yeah. when it comes to this people are really loose and stuff and they'll say anything with the keyboard but when we come together i think a lot of people that might have been like that before the minute they're like okay i feel better now and again they won't be so maybe violent with the keyboard and i just think as, as a whole the community will actually will change it will get even better it will get more solidified and it's not to say that there will just be this like click or something everyone is welcome but to me, it's important because you can only go so far when you've never met one another. You've never sat right. down and just got to know people. So this is why it's important. And I would say for everyone listening, if you, you know, you're on the fence about it, honestly, it is going to be an amazing time. I can assure you of that. There are so many different aspects why it is going to be worth every penny for those two days in Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, we've got some amazing things planned, some special, you know, surprises, but just everything that is planned, it's going to be an amazing time. And and a yeah. lot of people are looking forward to it. So I hope you guys can all uh, come out for it. Well, well put. And, you know, again, I'm I'm there to meet people and the people that I've met so far in the, in the several functions I've been to already. Again, look, I'm just an average guy. You know, I try to set a good example. If that means I end up leading some things, hey, fine. That wasn't my intention. Just trying to set a good example. Yeah. Not swearing whenever I get a chance because, well, that you can reach a broader audience. Look, I had people write to me and say, you swore. I'm not going to ever listen to your stuff again. It's like, okay, got it. Totally, totally understand. But let me let me throw a thing in there because some people say, well, you he he isn't doesn't address other things. He's he's totally he's just focused on flat earth and he's really open minded about the, the the whole concepts of flat earth. Yes, I absolutely am and I've said this from the beginning. I'm I will not lose sleep. If there's no dome on this thing, I will not shed a single tear because nobody knows nobody knows for sure. But at the same time I have to be open to all concepts because what right do I have to shoot them down? I start my day with flat earth. So there's there's no way I'm going to shoot down anybody's concept. It's like okay, you know, if South America is over here, Australia is over here, or the water, the ice, or Antarctica looks like this instead of this. It's like okay, fine, maybe, maybe I don't know. But let me let me address one more thing, which is because some people will say, well, don't, you know, you, you sound like you know you're you're trying to to please too many people and. And don't you have any biases? Aren't you aren't you against anybody? Do you do you, are, are is there a demographic you go after? You know, like like black people or Hispanics or, or gay people or women or or take your pick, whatever it is. I go no, but then I it's like you know what that's that sounds too good to be true. I did come up with one just just fictitiously for just for this show. I am against. I have always had a severe prejudice against Eskimos. And you're thinking, okay, well, he's making fun. Okay, no, bear with me for a second. I don't like the way they treat seals. I think they dress in a ridiculous manner. And I consider how they build their houses out of ice and snow a danger to themselves and others. Now, does my bias towards Eskimos, and people are saying, no, you're not taking this seriously. No, no, I am. Does my bias towards Eskimos have anything to do with flat earth? Is it more important than flat earth? No, it's not. And you're saying, okay, what's your point? My point is the creator, and this I'm pandering to you on this one, Robbie. Mm -hmm. The creator of this place does not care, not really, about the Illuminati or the Trilateral Commission or the Council of Foreign, uh, Foreign Relations or the Rothschilds or uh, take your pick, right? And I'm going to throw this one. This is one out to very specific people. If the creator doesn't care about a Jewish cabal – then I don't care about a Jewish cabal. It's beneath the whole concept. It's inside the flat earth. It's inside the created structure. Therefore, it's second tier. So I don't care. It's you're, The priorities are all screwed up. 
And so in my, my argument, and this is the last, I'll, 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 I'll say this and we'll, then we'll talk about whatever you want, which is, here's, here's my point. My point is, if you can make it, and I've actually said this on air about Eric, you know, if you can make it from point A to point B, if we can actually get to the whole flat earth critical mass culmination, everybody, you know, gets wound up in it and everybody knows, and you still want to attack a demographic, by all means, go ahead. If you can actually make it that far, if you're so locked in, hey, go ahead. What's the worst that could happen, right? Because I'm sure you could go to the creator of this place and say, oh, yeah, great, great, great structure you build here. And I want to wipe out this demographic. Let me know how that goes for you. Anyway, so that's my that's my little rant because people you know, sometimes ask, well, don't you believe in anything? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I used, well, to, hate, I mean, I, every, I used yeah. to hate Eskimos. Now I don't. Yeah, and that's the thing. I mean, everyone has their passions and stuff. And really, I mean, who's who are anyone to say, oh, you're not, you know, you're not focusing on this or that. I mean, you, you're allowed to focus on whatever you want, whatever you feel called to. And not necessarily what you're you're doing right now, you're going to be doing in five years. You might do a very specialty part of it. You might just focus on the whole Antarctica. I mean, who knows what will happen? But at the end of the day, someone accusing you of like not talking about uh, the Trilateral Commission or whatever. There's a yeah. lot of people on the internet that talk about the Trilateral Commission. Sure. Go to their website. Again, people specialize in different things. And again, that's what we need to like embrace and we need to understand that, you know, obviously we push people to like a Rob Skiba and stuff when it comes to like the Bible and different things like this, right? He becomes kind of like an expert in that area, right? We're not pushing him, you know, to the being the expert in uh, Buddhist uh, theology or whatever, yeah. we're, we're pushing them for these type of things. So again, it comes down to who is that person? What are they kind of bringing to the table? What are they doing? But uh, yeah, I mean, that to me, I mean, I get accused of that sometimes too. It's like, oh, you, you should be focused on just preaching the gospel and not this. And and to me, like, it's just, it's silly, but people will find something. They'll say, what does it matter? The biggest, and this is like the hugest question you get all the time. And it's just so silly. You know, they'll say, what does it matter? But they'll say, look, even if it was flat, it wouldn't change my life. I mean, that's just ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, someone yeah. actually saying that it wouldn't change their life. That is just a cop out that they're just trying to dismiss it, move on. Yeah. But in the reality is that it would change your entire life because, again, it would make you see everything different and not just take everyone's word for it just because they have a, a degree or because, you know, these scientists said it. I mean, scientists are discovering things every day, twice a day. You know, we never see who they are. Just scientists discovered, you know, they found, uh, you know, Earth-like planets, you know, 18 trillion light years away. You know, just nonsense. And everyone's like, yep, that's science. So we got to believe it. The whole idea, though, is when it rocks your entire worldview, when it actually tears away at your purpose, the value of who you are, who you're created to be. To me, that's a very sinister plot. To me, there's nothing higher than something sinister trying to take away your self-worth and your purpose and your calling right. in life and teach you that you're just an animal. To me, there's nothing higher than that, whether it's the trilateral, whether it's the Bilderbergs, whether it doesn't matter. There's nothing higher than a spiritual force that wants to diminish every single human being, regardless who you are. And that's right. exactly what the heliocentric Big Bang you know, cosmology has created. Scientism has done untold damage to so many people, so many children that walked away with the idea. And that's the beautiful thing. Like I said before in the show, there are no atheist flat earthers. If there are, have them on your show. I'd love to talk to them. Or, I mean, it would be a very interesting talk because how can you when you're in a created you know, space without a creator? But when a big bang happens, there doesn't need to be a, a creator. And that was the whole purpose behind this. So when I hear people say, you know, why? I mean, why would they lie? I mean, I, they're saying this on the news. You're going to see it. They're, they'll be shaking their head. They'll be like, yeah, but I, I just what would be the motive? Why, why would they lie? You know, yeah. about it being a ball. But they don't understand this. This goes so far back that this oh, yeah, is yeah, so yeah. far beyond if, if, humans. If the, if, you know, if the institution of science was only 30, 40 years It'd be much easier to, you know, to to deal with. But we're talking it's about something that goes four hundred plus years backwards. Oh, it goes further back than that. Well, I mean, you know what I mean. That this, yeah, of course. And this thing goes. This thing's been in play for a long time. Of course, the heliocentric. You know, that was kind of part of the thing. In my research, I go even further back. But right from the beginning, it's been in place to deceive mankind. And we're yeah. now at this point where basically scientism are basically our, you know, our seers. They're the experts of the world. We all look up to them. I mean, when you think who are the smartest people on earth, you think rocket scientists, you think nuclear physicists, right. you know, you, you put it in this category. But again, it's interesting because the Bible warns about the world's wisdom. It warns over and over and over. And it goes so far as to say in the Bible that the world's wisdom is foolishness to God. 
It's it's so incredibly polar opposite. It's not even close. It's not even off. He says it's foolishness. And to me, that's very intriguing because if we are sitting there still flat and yet everyone's believing that we're flying around the universe, I mean, that's kind of laughable. It, I mean, it really is laughable if you actually yeah. think of the reality, how far away we got. It wasn't that, oh, we're we're not just flat. We have a little uh, concave or, you know, we're maybe just wobbling a little bit or whatever. We've gone to the complete opposite where we're flying at absurd speeds around the universe, around the sun, and the sun is traveling around the universe and all of these things. So for me, you kind of peel it back and say, wait a minute, let's go back even further than even the Bilderbergs or the New World Order or who's beyond that? Because to sit there and say that men are smart enough to devise something this hidden from all of humanity, I'm sorry, men collectively and, and you, you see it even in this community, we infight. I mean, people fight, scientists fight with one another. How could all these people come together collectively to have a devised plan without fighting with one another? It's like the Antarctica Treaty, right? How yeah. is it we have a peace treaty lasting that long in a world where we have wars every day, right? It's an oh, yeah. impossibility unless there is a common purpose beyond even just people in countries. Oh, this yeah, is yeah, beyond. Yeah. That's what solidifies it. And that's what I say to a lot of people, that this is beyond just human you know, intellect or deception. This is oh. something superior to even what even could be devised by men. Because I'll tell you, men could devise something, but it's just like everything, like a, a murder mystery. Someone always gets caught, right? Especially yep. this kind of elaborate. It would be caught by now. The fact that it hasn't been caught, and what I'm saying by not caught by the majority of the world, right? is that this is very, very intricate. This is very intelligently put together. That's why I'm saying it's supernatural, not just men. But that, again, this is my theory. I don't yeah. conclusively always say things, but what I'm saying is I take it from what the Bible illustrates, and the Bible warns about looking to the wisdom of the world. And when we Got look it. at the wisdom of the world, we're opening science textbooks, right? Agreed. So we have to be critical if we come from a spiritual background or a biblical understanding, we got to say, okay, let's go look. But that's the cool thing is people one by one are going, wait a minute, they have been lying to me. It's pretty cool. Hey, hey, hey Robbie, real quick, because uh, we're, we're running out of clock. Go ahead and plug your uh, whatever you want to plug, your YouTube channel, the convention, go. Sure. Yeah, okay. Well, uh, Celebrate Truth is my YouTube channel. Just go to uh, youtube.com slash Celebrate Truth. You can find all my uh, documentaries. You can watch them there. Uh, CelebrateTruth.org if you want to order a DVD for uh, my documentary. And when it comes to the conference, it's super easy. Just go to fe2017.com. It's fe2017.com. And make sure if you've got an Android or Apple, grab the app. It's free. It's a lot of fun. You'll be able to find all the information on the conference. You'll be able to do notes in there. You'll be able to take part in interactive polls. You'll be able to see the growing community that's happening within there. It's exciting and look forward to seeing you in November. Fantastic. That's really, really great, man. And I will be joining Patricia Steer tomorrow on her YouTube channel, Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes, for episode 150, otherwise known as The Secret Show. That starts at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern, 11 Greenwich Mean Time. And uh, oh, we're going to be talking about uh, what Robbie and I are talking about tonight, plus emails and live show chat. And don't forget that I'm going to be in Nanaimo this Saturday for the is it this Saturday? Oh, geez, I think it is 2 p.m. at the Rocking Horse Pub that's up on Vancouver Island. And gee, Robbie, thank you. The time just blew by. It did. It was great. It was, like I said, long, long overdue. Like I said, I've been listening yeah. to you for almost two years now or a year and a half at least. So uh, <laughs> it's, it's been it's been great. But I knew at some point we'd be able to to connect. But you oh, yeah. like I said early yeah. on, I reached out to you by email and uh, you got back right away. I think I had asked you to to use some of your flat earth clues. You're like, yeah, by all means, it's creative. Oh, Commons. sure. I think. Honestly, yeah, I know. I feel bad. Deal. I, I made him Creative Commons license and two of the guys that took him got two and a half million hits on it. I don't know how much money that is, but it's pretty good. It's yeah, like, but again, oh. you, you have your phone number and your name in there. And again, I, I'm saying that a lot of the stuff that's happening is because you did do the Creative Commons, because you did put your name and your number out there, is because it doesn't matter who grabs that information. At the end of it, your phone number was right there. You, I mean, you basically got credit. I mean, maybe mo- not monetarily. Yeah, I, I, don't think, I don't think monetarily that was your motive at the beginning. No, the definitely not. Right now. Well, I think we're, we're going to wrap it up here. Is the cool. music coming? There it goes. Hey, uh, we'll see you guys next week. Same flat time. Same flat channel. Thanks, Robbie. Thanks, Mark. What is this? Is that a model?
people of the flat geocentric earth? <laughs> nice. I had to make a new one. What are you doing? Oh, my God.